A delta V is a respiratory muscle trainer, okay? It trains the muscles responsible for breathing. So when I see a patient and a patient can only breathe in 500, 750 milliliters, 1,000 milliliters, and they're five foot nine, five foot six, five foot nine, on their incentive spirometer, they should be all the way up here, but they're only grabbing, they're only pulling in around 1,000, maybe 500, maybe 750. This is called an IS or incentive spirometer. The maneuver, what you're doing, the maneuver is called an SMI. The acronym stands for Sustained Maximum Inspiratory. Okay, it means the maximum amount of air I can draw into my body, into my lungs, I should say. Okay, because of the how much, so much scarring and so much weight requirements there's needed now, those muscles are very weak resulting in a shallow breath. So when somebody measures on their incentive spirometer, and how you do incentive spirometer, I'll do this really quick. Make sure that my delta V is set to a zero on this. So remember, I need to measure. So I need to get rid of all the air from out from my lungs. Because if there's the air inside of my lungs and I'm, and I'm drawing air in on top of that, well, how do I know I start, what did I start off with? How do I know I have 500, 750, or 1,000, or 1,500? in my lungs to begin. What I'm saying is you have to get rid of all the air out from your lungs so you can correctly measure how much air can come in. So the first thing I do is I'm going to sit up straight, I'm going to exhale <sighs> until I can't exhale anymore. I'll just keep talking until I can't speak anymore. Is one, two, three, four. Okay, I can bring the piston all the way up to the 4,000 and leave it up there for uh, about three seconds. Basically, what I'm trying to say is my volume is a, is a little over 5,300. So that's good for a human being my size because I'm six foot tall. All right, even if you're an inch below, it's not that big of a difference. If you're five foot, if you let's say you're five foot five, five foot six, you're looking at 3,800 minimum. That's what a human being should be drawing into the lungs, bringing into their body. Because there's a deficit, because I'm breathing shallow. See, a regular, like me, I breathe maybe, let's say 12, you know, 12 to 20 breaths per minute any given time of day. Except when I exercise and of course it'll go up because that's just normal. If I, then let's say I'm averaging on my simple regular breathing, what we call in pulmonary tidal volume, and I'm averaging 1,500 to 2,000. So every time I breathe in normally, that's about 1,500 milliliters, which means I can breathe because my body, I should be able to breathe 12 to 20 breaths per minute at any given time, no problem. Like I'm, I'm six foot tall. I weigh 200 pounds. Well, 199 pounds. Okay, I weigh a, a certain amount right now. But what am I, what's my ideal body weight? So if you're five foot, that means your ideal body weight should be 105. Okay, 105. So I have my calculator. I know it's kind of hard to see, you don't have to zoom in on this. So I have my calculator, okay? I put in 105. Now the calculation is 65 milliliters per kilogram of ideal body weight. So, because it's in kilograms, I have to convert 105 to kilograms. So all I'm gonna do is press divide by 2.2 .2, and that's gonna give me 47.7. Just round up and say 48. So a way of saying 105 kilograms ideal body weight, I mean 105 pounds of ideal body weight, I can easily say 48 kilograms. I weigh 48 kilograms or equivalent to 105 on my, that's my ideal body weight. That might not be my current weight, but that's my ideal body weight. That's based off of height, mass, index, everything. So I'm gonna put, it's 47.7, I'm just gonna round up and say 48. So I'm gonna type in 48. Okay, so 48 times what? 65, because remember it was 65 milliliters per kilogram of ideal body weight, okay? So I took the, uh, took the 105 divided by 2, okay, which gave me 47.7. I round up 
and say just 48, since seven is closer to the pro, uh, to uh, uh, to its larger integer, you know, for uh, you know prime. Anyways, anyways, uh, so 48 times 65, 3,120 is what your volume should be at. That means on your incentive spirometer, if you see the 3,000, you just have to be above that. Just above the 3,000, it's 3,120. You can round down and just say 3,000. So do you have to be able to breathe that deep? Your body was designed and made by God Almighty to be able to breathe that deep because you should be able to breathe that deep. But if you can't, it just means you need some work at it. You just need to work at it. That's it. You just need to work on that. If you can only do half of that, well, that's, and that's the deepest breath you possibly can. And you can only do half of that. So 3,000, half of 3,000 is 1,500. You have to be at 1,500 milliliters or better. That's, that's where you should be at. That will bring in enough oxygen. That will get rid of enough CO2. Once you have that fixed, now you have to worry about, I don't want to say worry about, you have to work on the other problem. I get fatigued. I get out of breath quickly. Okay, so you have to work on endurance. Because once you get your lungs back up, it doesn't mean once your lungs are back to square one, because we see that all the time here, but it doesn't mean if you get your lungs back to square one, you're still gonna have the problem of you might be out of shape. You might not be eating correctly. You might be doing this, you, your, your legs might be weak. You know, so you still have to work on those problems, which all have a very simple solution. You got to get off your butt and move. Okay, you got to move around. And it might be scary at first. Don't get me wrong. I know that. But you take small steps 